Welcome again to the Four Bells Fitness Emporium. Here we are on workout number 13. Unlucky for some, but not for you, because you get fitness delivered to you via the YouTubes today. If we're looking at it in terms of how the programming is working, we are in week three of our push-up cycle. So, as always, we put the first things first in our programming. So it's technically Monday, which means we should be working on our push-ups and putting the focus on our push-ups while we are isolating at home. Let's talk about the warm-up first today. So very similar to the warm-up we've been doing for the last few weeks, just a slightly different shoulder warm-up at the beginning. Our warm-up today is gonna to be some shoulder circles. And we're gonna talk about different types of shoulder circles you can do to make sure that the shoulders are feeling good and articulating well before we get into push-ups today. Then, we've got, then we're gonna do what we've done for the last few weeks. We're gonna do some shoulder taps, 10 slow, 10 fast, and then we're gonna do a nice, easy Hindu push-up. So the idea is shoulder circles, 10 and 10 on the shoulder taps, five easy Hindu push-ups. We're doing that for three rounds today. So let's go over here and let's talk about different types of shoulder circles. So when it comes to the shoulder circle, all I'm really trying to ascertain is how do things feel? So if you're at the gym, and we usually do a lot of warm-up when we're at the gym, you would always think to yourself, um, well, first of all, how does my neck feel? How does the shoulders feel? I'm moving downstream from the neck. So first of all, when I'm starting with shoulder circles, come a little bit closer to you, come on, come a little bit closer, don't be shy, come around, there we go, hi, beautiful. So from here, when we go into our shoulder circles, there's a few ways to approach them. There is multiple different ways. I think when we're, within, we're in a warm-up situation, I'll probably think about 10 or 12 off the top of my head, different ways we can articulate that shoulder joint. But the very easiest one to start off with is start by putting my hand on my chest, I bring my thumb up, and when I get overhead, I turn the palm out, bring the hand round. What is the purpose of the hand on the chest? It's really trying to tell me how tight my thoracic spine is, how tight my pecs are, how tight my lats are, am I compensating? Can I feel my rib cage moving around? Well, what I'm doing with the hand with the thumb up is trying to see if I can imagine if there was a wall close to me that I'm not winging the arm out to the side or doing anything strange with the elbow. I ideally want to keep a nice close circle. So I could do 10 reps on one side, and of course move 10 reps over to the other side. From here, we could do both arms backwards together. From there, we can do both arms forwards together. From there, the fitness equivalent of patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. Can I do one arm forwards, one arm backwards, and then of course changing direction and going the other way. So of course, multiple different ways you can spin the shoulder circle. From there into the shoulder taps. As we've spoken about before with the shoulder tap, it really is a little bit of a shoulder stability drill with an anti-rotation drill. So that means if my hands are on the floor, I'm just trying to make sure that as I tap from one hand to the next, I'm not letting the hips move around. So hips nice and tight, 10 slow, and then it's 10 fast. From there, when we get into our Hindu push-up, we're gonna start with the knees on the mat, we're gonna have the bum back to the heels. Making it nice and easy means a long distance between my nose to the mat. I'm gonna pull myself forwards as if I was doing a pull up, transition over the hands, hips to the mat, push up, toes into the floor, hips to the ceiling, trying to stretch out the posterior chain, open the shoulders, knees down, bum back. We pull ourselves forwards again. So, spend some time doing some shoulder circles. We're going to do 10 and 10, 10 slow, 10 fast on the shoulder tap. And from there, five easy Hindu push-ups. We are doing that for three rounds in the warm-up today. It is workout from home number 13, the strength piece. So as we've been building on for the last few weeks now, it's now playing around with the push-up variations we've chosen for the last few weeks and building upon them in some way, depending on what level you are at and where you are with your push-up journey. So as always, we're gonna have the same working format. I'm gonna do five sets. Each set is three minutes long. Within that three minute window, I'm gonna be doing some push-ups of some type, which we're gonna talk about in a second, followed by some dumbbell rear flies, if we have dumbbells available, for 15 reps today. We're gonna to talk about both of these very quickly before we do a movement demo. When it comes to our push-ups, level one, scale push-ups the volume now comes down a little bit more. 
we are going to be doing five to eight reps. So at this point in week three, I should be trying to make this as challenging as possible. So a few people messaged me last week and they were like, oh cool, I went from one stair, I moved down another stair already in two weeks time. That's fantastic. The quest is to do the same thing. I want to be moving as close to the floor as possible, which means that if I am closer to five reps than eight, that is perfectly fine. The intensity, the difficulty level should be higher now. If we're in our regular push-ups, or for some people doing diamond push-ups, the volume increases now. We're trying to improve our muscular endurance, which means we've gone from sets of five to 10 to now five to 12. Which means, of course, if you're on the lower end of push-ups, you've got few, but you don't have many, then we're going to be staying nearer to five, but still trying to increase that volume. And if we're a little bit better at push-ups, and we did 12 sets of 10 last time, and that felt pretty good, then we should be trying to push it up to 12 reps this week. With the one-arm push-up, just the same as level one with the scale push-up, the rep scheme comes down, the intensity, the difficulty level goes up. And we're going to talk about how all of those should look before we start today. Once we've done our push-ups, as I said before, we're going to get into some rear delt flies for 15 reps. And as always, it's about playing around with what you have at home available. So first of all, when it comes to scale push-ups, you guys should know how your push-ups should be looking by now. As always, the hands should be shoulder width, I should be corkscrewing the arms into the ground, and whether my hands are on a bench, on the edge of the sofa, on the stairs in your house, should be actively pursuing our way to the floor. If we're doing a regular push-up, the rules are the same, which means hands should be shoulder width, I corkscrew those arms, and that external rotation allows the lats to help stabilize the shoulder. In my plank position, I pull myself down to the floor, and push away. So we're not just flying through reps for the sake of reps, it's trying to make sure we get those reps as beautiful as possible. One of the things I've seen online when I look at people doing one-arm push-ups, not only in the gym but outside the gym, and also sometimes in our Zoom classes as well, is a little bit of a funny thing that happens with the shoulder when we start doing one-arm push-ups. So when it comes to the one-arm push-up, the working arm, the one arm that is doing the push-up, shouldn't really have any deviation that we normally have. So what I can see sometimes is when people do their one-arm push-up is that the shoulder all of a sudden dives inside the hand. We don't want that. Puts a ton of stress on the shoulder. Basically, internally rotates the shoulder and puts a bunch of stress on it. So ideally, that hand, that, sorry, that shoulder position should be the same as it should look when we're doing a regular push-up. So even if that mean hand comes out to the side, I'm doing my one-arm push-up, the shoulder should still be over the hand. Not here, inside the hand, should be over the hand. So bear that in mind when we are working on our one-arm push-ups today. So if you're doing scaled, what are we doing? Five, yeah, it's five to eight. If we're doing regular push-ups, it's five to 12 reps now, bumping the volume up. And if we're doing one arm, it's now four per side, bringing the intensity up and the reps down. Rear delt flies. So for the rear delt fly, <coughs> in an ideal world, you have two light dumbbells. So I would say when I do these, I don't often go any heavier than 15 pound dumbbells. It's a kind of a corrective exercise that involves very small muscle groups. So I don't need massive dumbbells to do this. Again, if you're at home and you don't have access to lots of dumbbells, it could be two cans of beans, two twin cats, wherever it happens to be, it's something that is of equal weight. So let's talk about how they should look. When it comes to whoop, the rear delt fly, two light weights is the aim of the game. All I'm gonna do is hinge forward like I'm in a Romanian deadlift position. So I hinge forwards, and if you can kind of see me from the side here, pushing the butt back, loading the hamstring, loading the glute, a nice and neutral spine. I'm then gonna raise the arms up and slowly on the way down. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, slowly on the way down. One of the easy and tempting things to do here is to use momentum. Flapping around like a seagull is not the way to develop the back of the shoulders. Also one thing will start to happen, people will start to lead with the elbows. Another thing to happen, people start to get crazy with the body and the head, and everything starts to happen at the same time. It should be smooth, arms straight, control the way down. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, control the way down. We're doing push-ups, we're doing rear delt flies for 15 reps, and we are doing that five times. Workout from home 13, conditioning piece. It's quite straightforward today, guys. We are going to do six rounds of three one-minute stations 
which accumulates to an 18 minute workout today. But how is each one minute segment partition? Well, it's quite simple, guys. As it says on the board, it's 45 seconds on, followed by 15 seconds off, which means I'm going to do a hollow hold. We can talk about the four different variations of the hollow hold. I'm going to do a hollow hold for 45 seconds. I've then got 15 seconds to transition into a plank up. I'm then going to do 45 seconds of plank up. I've got 15 seconds to then get ready for my overhead carry. I'm then going to do that for 45 seconds before resting or transitioning for 15 seconds and starting all over again. We're doing these three stations six times, which is for 18 delightful minutes. Let's talk about how to do hollow hold variations. Now, when it comes to the hollow hold variation, there's four we use it here in the gym, depending on where you are with your hollow hold journey. So, what you need is a mat. Take a mat, have a leg down. It's the best part of today's workout. When it comes to the hollow hold, if you are looking at it from like a gymnastic strength point, which is where the hollow hold comes from, it comes from gymnastics, it's a hollow body position, which basically means bringing the rib cage down, bracing the abs, pushing the lower back into the floor, and creating a hollow body. Basically, I'm trying to create a body that almost has like a little saucer quality to it. That's what I'm looking to do, hence the hollow term. When it comes to gymnastics, there's tons of different hollow body variations. The reality is, here at the Four Bells, we're not gymnasts, we are generalists, we are GPPers, we like to do general physical preparedness, so we have four different levels here. Level number one is pressing my low back into the floor. Press the low back into the floor. If I was going to punch myself in the stomach, I would break my hand on my hands of steel. I'm going to reach forward with my hands, shoulder blades are off the mat, knees come up to the ceiling, and I'm pressing that low back down. Level two is one leg straight. Level 2.5 is the other leg. Level three is both legs straight, still pressing the low back down. And level four is both hands overhead as we do our hollow hold. So the idea should be is that I'm looking to do one of those four levels for 45 seconds. Of course, if you're doing level two or 2.5, I would say every 20-ish seconds, we should be switching the leg that is extended. Or if you want to, as there's six rounds, I could do one round with one leg straight. When I come to the next round, it's the other leg, but you're gonna have to keep track of that. When it comes to the plank up, we've done plank ups before. It's an anti-rotational tricep extension exercise. I have the hands on the floor, plank position. I'm bringing the elbow down, elbow down, hand up, hand up. Elbow, elbow, hand, hand. And all I'm trying to do as I alternate the arm I start with is just trying to minimize the wiggles. Try not to wiggle the bum around too much. That's what we're trying for in the plank up. Last but not least is an overhead carry. So with our overhead carry, maybe you need a dumbbell. Maybe you need a kettlebell. Depending on what you have available, maybe you're going to do it with one arm. Maybe you're going to do it with two arms. Today, preferably, what I would like is one round with one arm and the next round with the other arm. So I'm going to use this kettlebell here. What I'm going to do is take my kettlebell, hopefully I've got overhead clearance, and I'm going to do a nice casual stroll, nice straight arm, trying to keep the bicep to the ear, and I'm just going to stroll around for 45 seconds. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what we're doing for our overhead hold. It can be a kettlebell, it can be a dumbbell, it can be a sandbag, whatever you have available. I'm going to do 45 seconds on one arm. That's all I'm going to do, and then switch to the other arm in the next round. Our conditioning piece today, 18 minutes, Six rounds where we're doing 45 seconds off, sorry, 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off of hollow holds, plank ups, and overhead carries.